35. Stockwerk. Kommt. Sofort. Great indeed. Imagine a country so free, one can throw glass on the streets. You must be out of your goddamn mind. Hi, I'm Dejon King, and you are listening to King's Productions Late Night Talk Radio, where we will explore the many films of the past and present. This is a video essay, an exploration of cinema, film, TV, and most importantly, known as visual arts. As the protest continues with the actors in the Hollywood studios, Let's turn the clocks back and study the films from the past. Our first episode is brought to you by KI Productions NGS LLC. This is a video production and digital marketing company owned by Dejon King. If you need any help creating any videos from scratch or help marketing for websites, social media, even if you need a, a portrait, a family montage created, etc., please email me at King. Dejan zero at gmail.com and I would love to create art with you. Now it is time. Perfect introduction to King's late night talk starts in 1988 when Eric Bogosian and Oliver Stone both collaborated and created the American thriller Talk Radio, a film shot in only four weeks in 1988. Oliver Stone being the director and Bogosian as the screenwriter. This is one of those films where you can relax and sit back and laugh at the menacing humor of Eric Bogosian, who stars as Barry Chaplin, a rude, contemptuous talk show host. The story is based upon a play written by Bogosian of the same title name and loosely captures the true events of the chilling story of Alan Berg, a liberal Denver radio personality gunned down by right-wing terrorists in 1984 for his controversial takes. In this story, Barry Chaplin's character is a late-night talk radio host for KGAB in Dallas, Texas. He takes late-night calls from various strangers who are whack jobs, psychopathic serial rapists, and completely deranged for Barry's liking. Besides them, some are just lonely. But he feeds into their skepticism of how their lives have turned out completely a disaster. And as they look for answers from Barry, who empathizes with some and blames others for being a mistake in their own directionalist endeavors. They grow completely impatient with his remarks, criticism. But I mean, if you have nothing going on in your life, this might be what you're looking for. The attention, the longing conversation for the lonely person the long distance company that keeps you up at night reminiscing and looking for answers. The privy nature of Barry entices his audience members who continuously call him for reassurance and comfort in their lonely lives. As the story develops over a four hour long radio show, Barry learns that his talk show is going to be picked up for national syndication. But Barry confused, depressed, and sheltered away from his loved ones, takes this very night, this episode, and subject his fans to an all night barrage of verbal abuse and efforts to ruin his own name and possibly lose a contract. But why? Barry is living his American dream. Barry has gained such a well-known name in his studio for his antics. And that is the reason he is amused by many who question his tactics. Why, Barry? One of the film's tropes is the cowardice call-out. What is the cowardice call-out? One person must call another person out of their shortcomings or fault, specifically calling them out on their actions, their behaviors, being driven by fear or cowardice as a part of the criticism. The accusations against the recipient must, at the very least, hold some real water to it. Barry isn't a hero by any means. 
not even an anti-hero. He's rude, sarcastic, egotistical, and thrives upon his opportunistic nature when it comes to pivoting a conversation into a direction he favors, which makes him seem even more understanding. As the mood of the film glooms down the dark path, Chaplin, who is a Jewish man, receives death threats from an anti-Semitic listeners. Mark Cooper put it best. This film is a riveting portrait of a complex man who, like Stone himself, the director, struggles with being a favorite of the institutions he attempts to rebel against. He speaks of the delusional American public, the people, the daily citizens who criticize and hold their own prejudiced beliefs, such as he does. The production team did such an amazing job analyzing Barry's facial expressions and mannerisms. The shots in the studio encapsulates an animal being trapped in a cage. As Barry sits in a cold, dimly lit room, large and square space, it coincides with this peculiar and meticulous sense of delivery. Once he speaks, you are the one who must answer to him, not the other way around. Think about it. He is the radio personality who must listen to his audience. But once he gets the floor, the attention shifts to him, and he is the main focal point steering the conversation like a roller coaster. And in a roller coaster, you have no control. What can that do to a person who wants full autonomy but doesn't feel in control of their own emotions, who is incited upon becoming frustrated, humiliated, and misjudged? It can drive a person crazy. And in Barry's case, he did just that. He listens, but he listens so well to jump to his own conclusions. The cycle of disarray, the unorganized minds who speak for clarity, but they don't understand that they're the only participants for capital, the capital that is only pocketed by the studio and by Barry. So in essence, it doesn't matter what you say, it only matters what you hear. Barry is the reason for his own demise. He is the reason we all feel pity for him. Now towards the end of the film, after his emotional monologue, he accepted his offer and began to accept those around him and begins his healing process with himself and the world he blamed. But it was too late. He would come face to face with the abomination, death, and possibly his own creator. That is talk radio. There is much more to unravel, but I will only give a peek into this fictional world. It's an hour and 49 minutes long. I personally believe that you should give it a watch. This is King's Productions, and I'll see you again. Take care, everyone. It's the Alan Berg Show with your outlandish, witty, and totally unpredictable host, Alan Berg. Here's Mr. Outlandish and Mr. Witty with Mr. Talent and Willie with Man Who Gets a Tremendous Respect. Tom Martino, welcome to Channel 4. Welcome. I'm here already. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, a lot of you know him already, quite obviously. He is a consumer expert for Channel 4. I think a man in this town right now probably has as much credibility. When you talk about an issue, those people really listen. You think so? Unlike That's my good. show, they listen a lot.